Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Today I will present a summary of Islamic jurisprudence or what in Arabic is called Usul al-Fiqh <coughs> I will present only the basics For understanding Quran and Sunnah Knowing Usul al-Fiqh is essential for understanding Quran and Sunnah, knowing Usul al-Fiqh is essential. What is this Usul al-Fiqh? This really tells us the, what are the sources of Islamic law and also tells us about the methods of making law or methods of deriving Islamic law from its sources. So these are the two things. Knowing this is necessary to understand the Quran and Sunnah. Otherwise we shall not understand the Quran and Sunnah. For example in Quran there are many types of words. Without studying Usul we will not know what, are, what is Aam, what is Khas, etc. So we have to know Usul. Second, I, I will, I, I mean, Usul discusses the methods of making Islamic law or deriving Islamic law from its sources, that is Quran and Sunnah and other secondary sources like Istisan, Istisla, Maslaha, Mursala, Qiyas, etc. That I will discuss later. This subject was developed by many jurists, many scholars but primarily by Imam Shafi'i Rahmatullah Alayhi and by Imam Al-Ghazali he has two books on Usul, Imam Al-Ghazali and many others including Imam Fakhruddin Al-Razi Imam Al-Shatibi and many others and other jurists, they have developed it in the recent time a, a great scholar of Afghanistan who lives in Malaysia, Dr. Hashim Kamali has written a book on Usul, Principles of Islamic Jurisprudence and this is probably the best book because it has summarized all the past, past work and the recent work and also his understanding and he is a great Adam. He is the man who, who drafted the constitution of Afghanistan, the, the constitution now Afghanistan is following has been drafted by this man. He is an Afghan. His, he was asked to do it and he did it, not thinking who is in the government, but thinking in the long term what is in the best interest of Islam. Now, I will discuss two, three things only. One is distinction between Sharia and Fiqh. What is Sharia and what is Fiqh? This has been emphasized by great men, doctor, probably he was not a doctor, Sayyid Ramadan, son-in-law of Imam Hassan al-Banna and father of Dr. Tariq Ramadan. He emphasized the need for the distinction between Sharia and Fika. He has written a book, he wrote a book, long back, maybe 50 years back, <coughs> three major problems confronting the Muslim world or confronting the Muslims. He said one, as far as I remember, one is uh, failure to distinguish between Sharia and Fiqh. And second, he said, the plight of women in Muslim, among the Muslims, bad situation of women in Muslim, among the Muslims. And third is, he said, wrong concept about obedience to the ruler, that a ruler has to be followed always. These he wrote in a book, which I got somehow and I preserved and I circulated and many many major scholars said how could you find it <laughs> okay so uh, he said about distinction between Sharia and Fika I have explained now from his book though both terms are used for Islamic law Sharia is used for Islamic law and uh, Fika is also used for Islamic law and we mean the same thing but 
still there is important difference. Sharia according to Sayyid Ramadan, and maybe the truth is this, that the law derived from Quran and Sunnah is Sharia. Laws derived from the Quran and Sunnah, the authority of the Quran and Sunnah is highest. From these two sources received law is called Sharia. And Fika, he says, is the law derived, as I said before, Sharia, plus laws derived through Istihad. The Sharia, as explained, and the laws derived by Istihad, by Mustahideen, from other sources, such as Qiyas, Maslaha, Mursala, Istisan, Urf. Urf means established custom of a country, of a state, of an area, not contrary to Islam. This Urf is called custom. And this also source of Islamic law, according to Usuliyun, the jurisprudent scholars. Now, he says, as laws derived, as laws derived by istihad is considered zanni, that is not beyond doubt. This is the classification that istihad is liable to be wrong. Mustahid can commit wrong. Allah cannot commit wrong, the Sulla cannot commit wrong, but others can commit wrong. So the fatwas of Mustahideen are respectable and all Mustahideen should be honored. But nobody can say that this istihad is wrong, right, absolutely right. And that is the reason Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that do istihad, even if you were wrong, even if you reach wrong result. That is, Prophet Sallallahu said himself, that it can be wrong, it can be right, that's okay. So he said, Sayyid Ramadan said, that we must distinguish between Sharia and Fika, because what is derived from the Quran and Sunnah, uh, it cannot be, I mean, we cannot, ignore it, we cannot differ from it, we cannot say that I will not obey it, then I will not remain a Muslim. But istihadi opinions, you can differ. Istihadi opinions, you can differ. So this I have explained now, uh, while explaining usul al-fiqh, while explaining Islamic jurisprudence, I have explained distinction between Sharia and Fika. Now another point, now I will explain, that is about the categories of Sharia hukum. In Fika book it is written, Hukm uh, Sharia, the Hukum of Sharia. I have made, made it like this, about the categories of Sharia Hukum, what Hukum Sharia has given, how to look at it. If a Hukum, that is command, if a Hukum, command, it can be positive command, it can be negative command. If a Hukum is derived from Kati, source, or unequivocal source, where there is no doubt. That is, the matan is kati, text is kati. For example, Quran. It is considered that Quran is text is kati, all, wholly. And only mutawatar hadith or sunnah, which is narrated by large number of sahabis in the first generation, was called kati. And if, if a hukum is found in this kati source, that is in Quran, or in mutawatar sunnah, or mutawatar hadith, one, one, one shart, one condition. Second, and if the meaning is also kati, if the meaning is kati, not uh, alfaz al waziha, clear words, if you if the meaning is uh, if the meaning is clear, no doubt about the meaning. That means text is kati, Quran and Mutawatar Hadith, and meaning is kati. That is that is certain meaning. 
no no two opinions for example i mean for example when you say a book it means book nothing else a column it means only column nothing else but if you say ainun it may have two meanings ainun means what is called uh, water water flowing and ainun means i so if a hukum is established by kati text matan and kati meaning then it is called farz by hanafis obligatory other madhabs call it wajib other madhabs do not use the word farz they word use the word wajib what hanafis call farz other madhabs call wajib majority call it wajib now if the hukum is negative no do not do it of this type that kati text and kati meaning saying something negative then it is haram according to all here is no difference between madhabs now now if the text is not kati matan is not kati or if the meaning is not kati then majority call it almost all call it mandub recommended and it is classified into sunnat al muakkada sunnat ghair al muakkada and maybe mustahab so this is about other than kati kati if one is not kati or two is not kati meaning is not kati or text is not kati or text is kati meaning is not kati meaning is kati text is not kati then it gives mandu recommended sunnat al muakkada ghair al muakkada and sunnat al muakkada is a term used for that if you do not do it then according to suliyun or majority of the suliyun then you should be, you cannot be beaten but you can be condemned this is what they have said about sunnat al muakkada ghair al muakkada you cannot be condemned <laughs> you cannot be condemned now on the opposite side that is not kati not kati but negative then according them all of them it is makru all of them it is makru and uh, the other mazhabs other than hanafis they have not made a distinction between uh, makru tanzihi makru ta- tahrimi it is only hanafis who have made this distinction but other mazhabs majority say makru now usul also discusses usul also discusses classification of hadith in many ways for example whether it is sahi or zaif or mauzu or sahi hasan zaif mauzu also discuss about about mutawatir and ahad also discuss about mursal various kinds of mursal mursal means if a hadith is narrated by a tabi and directly quote the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is called mursal it has been sent up irsal it has been sent up there can be mursal maybe in the top that is tabi referring to sahabis or tabi tabi referring to the uh, prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then then two gaps two gaps in the beginning but it the gap may be in the middle also so in irsal or mursal are various types and most of the scholars have not accepted mursal for law making except as a help the main thing is established in the quran and the uh, uh, sahih hadith but you can take it you can call it also as a help as a assistance now usul also discusses these things like ijma ijma we know agreement of the sahabis of that time or agreement of the ulama of that time or agreement of the ulama now this will come under ijma and then there is also discusses tarud tarud means contradiction if there is in i mean usulun says that there is no really contradiction in the sahih sources 
Quran and Sunnah Sahih sources, there is no contradiction. And the contradiction is apparent, only Zahiri. It can be explained, it can be clarified. Maybe one relates to women, one relates to men, maybe one relates to underage, one relates to adult, one relates to war time, one relates to peace time. So it can be, I mean, it can be, uh, it can be, I mean, clarified. The Tarut does not exist then. But if, if really it happens at all, then he says, uh, I mean, Usulion says, then the stronger evidence will prevail. The stronger evidence will prevail. Uh, this is they have said. For example, Mutawatar and an Ahad. Then Mutawatar ruling from Mutawatar will prevail. Between Sahi and Zaif, no doubt Sahi will prevail, <laughs> etc. And then I will finalize now. Final. I will not discuss the uh, usul. They have to read book. And I will say, uh, who are listening, that please read some usul books. This is necessary. Necessary. And please read. If possible, Hashim Kamali's book in English on Islamic jurisprudence. And if you know Bangla, then you can read his translation of his book also. Translation of his book also uh, in Bangla. Uh, my, made by BIIT, Bangladesh Institute of Islamic Thought. Their website is iiitbd.org. BIITBD dot org sorry wrong i i i t b d dot org i i i t b d dot org so you can see that and now finally i will say that modern scholars have said un usul that the scope of using chaos is less now why because the circumstances have so much changed. The society, politics, economies, business, everything has so changed that the scope of chaos has reduced. Isma also not possible. The uh, whole world, scholars agreeing, very difficult. Something may be achieved through OIC. Though if we agree that it's from each country, one or two scholars in OIC uh, say, say something on our fatwa, then we can say, but people may raise questions whether it is Isma or not. So modern scholars say the scope of Isma is less now. Allama Iqbal said a big thing. He said by Isma we should mean in a modern Muslim state the Isma of the parliament. <laughs> this is what Iqbal said. I am just quoting him. Uh, on this there is no agreement. But really what is happening in any country the, what parliament agrees, this becomes law. If it is within under the um, uh, under the purview of the Quran and Sunnah, then this is the fatwa, <laughs> kind of isma. Okay. And then he says, the, what are the what are the uh, I mean, what can be achieved more now? What can be used more now? One, he says, is maslaha, welfare. Wherever there is maslaha, there is Islam. Wherever there is good for ummah, good for humanity good for Islam. And then Maslaha, on the basis of Maslaha, the laws have to be made now, Islamic law. New law. And they, and he says, modern scholar says, or Usul, must says, Makasi the Sharia. The objectives of Sharia should be the basis of law. What is objective of Sharia? More or less we know, protecting life, Hifzul Nafs, protective Nasal, that is, children, protecting Iman, protecting Akal, and protecting uh, property, Hizbul Mal, Hizbul Mal, and the opposite called Mafasid, the opposite of Mafasid, that is uh, not uh, wrong, wrong, Fasad. <laughs> so I think my speech on Usul will help you a little in understanding, I mean, Usul al fiqh principles. I have discussed the major portion, major aspects. I have not discussed the details of Usul which require good reading and learning. So, uh, dear listeners, thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.